full time in game three of Euro 2024, and Spain have beaten Croatia 3 0. This is the game I said that will end 2 2. Easy win for Spain at the end of the day. The game was almost over by. Oh, it was over at halftime. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> the game was over at halftime. Yeah, I guess the biggest talking point is the refereeing. <laughs> um, last game, I said the refereeing was really nice. First game as well, and I think I jinxed it after saying how uh, how dope Afcon was. Here, I just really jinxed it. Michael Oliver, it had to take an English refereeing team. Stuart Atwell, what are you doing in VAR? How can Rodri foul the one person who's about to score? He's the last man. The keeper is on the floor. It's a clear foul. Isn't that denying a clear goal-scoring opportunity? How is that not a red card? Like, that did not make sense to me. I know Croatia might not have won the game, but um, even if he got a red card. But the larger context of the group, this is what we call the group of death, right? Spain, Croatia, Italy, Albania. That was going to be a big game. And knowing the next game is against Italy, like it was going to be a big loss uh, if um, Rodri was not playing. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they looked at that and decided it's going to be a yellow card because you've fouled someone who's just about to score, right? Like, isn't that a clear goal scoring opportunity? Isn't that Suarez handling the ball on the line? You know, like type of thing. But anyway, you gave the penalty. Then even after the penalty, it was called for encroachment. Uh, Petkovic, the penalty was saved. It falls to Perisic, who apparently encroached. I think he did encroach. And then laid it off to him in an offside position. And that is how that goal was disallowed. So, game ended 3 nil. But I think, I'll, okay, we'll talk about the good things that Spain did today. Spain, to be, okay, actually, to be fair to Croatia, Croatia really dominated this game. The first few minutes of the game, they played quite well. They were... They had more passes. They had more possession. They looked like the team that was more in control. And they also had good chances because Unai Simon was actually called upon on a few occasions. If it wasn't for the finishing of Budemir up front, or lack of, <laughs> right? Um, who else was there? Maya. Like, just the decision-making in the final third was a bit dodgy for me. Then, um, first goal was Morata. Again, Spain scored two goals just from clearances. The second clearance, I can't remember who it was, but the first clearance was Kukurea, who apparently, who, by the way, today was very impressive. We got a new chant for him for today. That is what we'll be playing when Kukurea plays, but he was quite, quite, quite solid. Um, yeah, so he hoofs the ball. The ball ends up to the Ro at Rodri's feet. Rodri basically gives Fabian Ruiz, and Ruiz picks out a superb pass. That pass reminded me of Abbe Shah. I keep forgetting his name, but the Swiss number 20. Just picking spaces, picking good spaces, and playing it straight to the striker. Again, Morata's finish very similar as well to Dua, Quadro Dua, the, the Swiss striker. So we're starting to see like plays like Having having a midfielder like that in midfield and being able to pick those passes from the middle of the park is something that's crucial. Something I realized at the beginning of the game, the first 10 minutes or so, we were we were doing a live on TikTok. I noticed that they were playing with the back four. So what Spain were doing is that up front was Morata, Lamin Yamal, and Nico Williams. At times, Morata would just go and stand next to Nico Williams and Yamal stays on the other side to keep the width. Which meant the midfield, the, the two centre backs were not really guard, uh, marking anyone. That was Pognarich and Sutalo. The two centre backs for Croatia were not marking anyone. So Sutalo kept on rushing to midfield, right? To try and get anyone who falls into that place, like uh, Pedri or Fabian Ruiz, who tries to come up with the ball. As a result, there was such a, there was such a big space between Pognarich, the left centre back, and Stanisic, the right back, right? And I, I saw it. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think it would be something that would happen. So, the goal actually comes from this because the same exact moment Sutalo pushes up and they leave that gap in the middle. Rodri gets the ball, gives it to Fabian Ruiz. Rodri gets the ball off a clearance, mind you. They didn't really like play it from the back and then got the space. But once the ball got to Rodri, they noticed that's where the gap is. Rodri gives it to Fabian Ruiz. Fabian Ruiz almost immediately straight through that same gap. Since the centre-backs have just decided to split, just put it down that same gap and see how it goes, you know. So, it was quite... Um, that was good coaching on the part of De La Fuente. Like, we have to give him that because he noticed where the gap was and he was like, yeah, let's let's utilise that space and see how we can um, create uh, an opportunity for our team, right? So, yeah, that was the first goal. Then second goal, 
um it was a cross ball to Lamin Yamal and then Yamal controls the ball and brings it back gives it to Pedri Pedri lays it off to Fabian Ruiz who in two touches takes out almost four defenders and then puts it in the on to the right of Livakovic the Croatian goalkeeper then the third goal it was a corner they played it short they played it a bit of over there on the wing then Lamin Yamal with an amazing ball Carvajal puts it uh into the corner and the score was 3-0 just before half time and just like that Croatia had a tough task right and already Croatia you know with the, once you have old players you have Modric and uh, Brozovic and those old guys like keeping them in a game and trying to make them come from 3-0 down in the first match of the tournament is not wise so i second the decision to just bring all of them off Perisic also came on at half time um yeah like this one was over in the first half but again the the refereeing that team that english team of michael oliver anthony taylor stuart atwell anthony taylor was the fourth official so we won't fault him too much but yeah it overall it was a they, they had a good game it was just that one moment right because i feel like that decision was something that really hinges upon um or a lot would hinge upon that one decision you know now spain have a bit of an injury issue cuz morata came off actually just subbed himself off when he was injured and then rodri looks like he has a, something of a hamstring strain so he didn't look cuz he walked off he didn't look that bad but the fact that he's seen it the thing with the hamstring injuries if it's a, like a grade 1 type of injury you're looking at maybe 7 to 10 days you don't have 7 to 10 days in a tournament right um if it's anything worse than that grade 2 you're looking at 21 days that's basically the the week before the final so yeah a bit of an injury issue for them but all in all great win croatia now needs to step up in the next game because as you know it's the four best placed third teams in every group we have six groups the four best number 3s go through so this minus 3 goal difference is not a good look for them they really need to step up next game is albania for them and then spain go up against italy and right now they're top of the table so yeah that is spain 3 croatia nil